Hi everybody, this is Katie Vanderbeer and welcome to the second part of installing our servers A, B, and C for CIS 234 and 235. In the first video um, part of this assignment, you downloaded and installed VM Workstation and you downloaded your Windows Server Data Center Edition 2012 R2. Uh, and then here, what we're going to do in this part of the exercise is to do our installations on our, ser on our VM workstation. So installing our servers is what we're doing now. Um, we'll have three servers that we're installing, A, B, and C. And like I mentioned, for those of you in 235, the Server 2 course, you can use servers if you already have them from um, the first class. If you want to start fresh, you can start fresh too. I'm going to start fresh. I'm not going to use my servers, by the way, from last semester. So uh, make sure Windows um, Server is fully downloaded. How you can do that, let me give you an idea. Here is mine, the file size. I think it said it's about 4 gigs. Um, and it will have a .iso extension. So yeah, 3.97 gig, about 4 disks about four gigs of disk space it takes up. So make sure you're fully downloaded in that. And make sure you have your product key on hand. So I have mine over here. Um, I started this video, by the way, like three different times because I keep showing and leaving my product key up on the screen. And dang it, I don't want to do that because I don't want to share it. Um, so I'm going to try really hard not to restart it again. So here, uh, what we need to do now, um, it, we're ready to install them on VM Workstation. So launch your VM Workstation if it's not open already. And I have mine open. Um, and remember, we set up server A, B, and C. We set up the configurations of them here and here. Now I've already gone through and installed my servers on A and B, so I'm going to just show you how to do it on C. You can start on C. They're all the same though. This process for installing is the same. So once you do one, you do the next the same, and then the next the same. Uh, what you need to start to do here is to make sure that the CD, DVD, the SATA drive is pointing to where your ISO image is. So we did this in the last video, but just let's verify that it's pointing to where my ISO image is. Now, mine is, see, mine is paused, so it's in the middle of it, but yours shouldn't be. I, I because I had to pause my video because I left my product key up there, it's, it's um, grayed out, but yours, yours won't be. So just verify that it's pointing to the ISO um, wherever you stored that image and then hit OK. And then what you want to do at that point is click power on this virtual machine. Mine is, mine is resume because it's paused, like I mentioned. But you want to do power on this virtual machine. And what it'll do is um, launch. You won't get that. Again, mine's a little different. But you will um, start the installation. So what VM does is it points to that ISO. And it's as if you're sitting in front of a fresh computer and doing a install from a an installation a file or a CD like we used to in the old days. And um, it goes through that process. So mine's starting and it the installation itself isn't very long because all of the roles and resources that we add later um, takes additional time. So we can walk through the full installation of, server, of one server and then you can do it for the other servers. Um, additionally, while well, that's launching, okay, the first part, um, yours should just look like this where it starts the installation. Now when you're in VMware, so when you click in this environment here, notice my mouse has gone away. We're right in the environment. We Here's my mouse so I can control stuff here. But outside of this window, that's your, your normal workstation. So you have your computer out here and then you have the virtual system here. Um, when you're in here, you're controlling the things that are in the server. And then to get out of this box, it's typically Control-Alt. Um, 
the new version of VM Workstation, it manages movement really, really nicely. So you can see I'm just going in and out that way. Um, you, if you've used VM, you know what I mean. If you've if you've used it before, but you know how to get out of there. So we're using English, so we're going to hit next here. That's your first thing. And then install now. So we start the installation process. Um, like I said, it's not a very long install. The first thing that's going to come up is your product key. So this is where I'm going to try not to screw up and show you my product key. I want to pause my video and enter my key. I cannot, you cannot copy and paste. You have to just old school enter in your ca characters in your letters. And then after you do that, hit next. Uh, as a reminder for your product key, go out to um, DreamSpark or on the hub and look at your product history, uh, your order history, and find that download for Windows Server 2012 R2. And you'll see your your product key. If you've used it before um, in one of these classes, you can, or in this server, you can use it again. It doesn't matter how many times you install it. Um, it's the same product key. You're all using it for academic pur purposes. So you use the same product key on all of your servers, and you've probably used that same product key. If you're in CIS 235, you used it in 234, and that's okay. So let me pause for a minute, put mine in and hit next. You do the same. Yeah, let me get to the right place without messing this up. Okay, I closed my product key file so I won't accidentally open it. Um, if you have an error that says this product key won't work, check your letters and numbers. You have a mistake in there somewhere. Okay, the, the next option of what we want to install, it asks for server core or a server with a GUI, and we're going to do server with a GUI. Um, the GUI option is useful when, it, uh, when a GUI is required. This is graphical user interface. Now, if you do a, if you do a server call, core, you can install GUI later. That's fine, but we're going to start with GUI. It's a lot easier to learn. We have this point and click environment. Most um, companies have a GUI that their administrators can work with. And um, the server core is the same thing. It's still a server. It's just that it doesn't have the GUI uh, application or the GUI environment because then it saves on resources. So if you don't have a very powerful hardware um, selection or hardware options for your servers, um, then you could do a server core. And then all of the commands that you wanted to do would be in a command line. So if you had to do Active Directory, you would run a command that installs Active Directory instead of using this nice point and click environment like we're going to. So select server with a um, GUI on all three of your servers. Accept the license terms. Uh, we are not doing an upgrade because we are starting with a new install. So don't. that's the default. We want to do a custom install for full. And then um, we've already allocated 60 gigs for this. And we're going to leave that and then hit next. No. On our virtual system, we started with a new system. If you were doing this on a, a computer that an old computer you had laying around, you would have your actual like C drive. We're here on our virtual s software, but you could format that drive before you installed it. If you're doing this on your computer at home, make sure you're in the virtual environment, by the way, and not on your actual computer because you will overwrite everything. This server has to be installed in a virtual environment so that you don't mess up your home system. So here we go. We're going to start the installation process. Um, this doesn't take too long. Uh, while this is going through, um, I want to point you over to a couple of resources that I will add in Blackboard um, that you can see right now. Um, the first one that I'm just going to add the full document. It's a, called a Lab Setup Guide Resource Document for 7410, which is CIS 1, um, 234. And um, this document 
is kind of like a guide for the teachers who want to give the students these servers set up. I'm not giving them to you, so you have to install these servers when we do certain labs. This is useful for those of you guys in 235 as well, because you might not remember how to do something in um, from last semester. So let's say that you get to an assignment and it says, in order to do this lab, you need to install Active Directory. Um, wow. Maybe you forgot how to install Active Directory. So you're going to go down here and find out what do you do to um, install Active Directory. Um, or let's say that wasn't a great example. Well, I'll show you how to do that, but that wasn't a great example because there's not one there. Oh, configuring a TCP IP client. Um, and look at uh, up here in lab one, we're not going to set these. We'll look at these in our configurations, but it'll you'll um, have some IP addresses that you'll need to set like this. And maybe you forgot how to do that. Well, you can go down to here to see how to configure the TCP IP clients. You know, go go there, there, do this. It tells you the instructions. Um, this is just a Word document. It's got everything in there. Again, let's say that you want to, um, these are the labs. These aren't things I'm going to assign. These are just configurations. Um, but again, if something tells you to change a computer name, the instructions are there. Installing hard a new hard disk, here's our instructions. So there's just a lot of really useful information in this document here that um, kind of pulls together things that you'll need for both classes. So I'm going to just throw that out there for, for both of you, both of the classes there. Uh, let me check on our install. I'm on server C. Okay. Um, the other thing that while that's installing, uh, I want to point out that that is available to students in it's the textbook for um, CIS 234. So in the Windows Server 2 course, you have your own textbook, the 7411. And um, I'm going to add, or you'll see already, that the there's a bookmark version of the 7410 book. I'm adding that t t right now. So in this bookmark version of the of the first textbook, uh, if you didn't have it from last semester, this is also a useful guide because again, it maybe you forgot things, um, or you wanted to go through how to configure IP4 address again. You could just reference use this book as a reference, um, and this is our textbook. So in um, in server one, we're really doing lesson one and lesson two in these in this thing. And in 235, we're doing the same thing because you need to have servers in order to pick up with your textbook. Because your textbook, when we look at that in 235, um, This is my highlighted book. But when you when we look at the textbook in 235, it has, you know, the same amount of lessons. But it, when it picks up with deploying a server um, manager images, when you, you start looking at this material, it assumes that you already have these servers set up and you may not. So if we wanted to install and deploy WDS, for example, um, it says open server manager and start doing this. Well, I can't assign these to you and you can't do these until you actually have your server. So that's why we're doing this in both courses um, so that you can go through these things. Okay, so you'll have um, access to both books and I'll just put them out there in both classes. You'll want to reference them as you see 
fit. Um, my installation is almost done and I just closed my textbook but um, I'm going to open up the that lesson one again from the first book because there's some interesting things in here that we can talk about real quick. Four. Somebody bookmarked it for us, so we're happy. Um, what we're doing in this video is really l the material in lesson one. Um, when you, for, for those of you especially in CIS 234, this is part of your required reading. In 235, you've already done it. There are four main different um, distributions of Windows Server 2012. 20, there is a 2016 server. And it's new. It's 2016 right now. So it's not really out there in production environments everywhere. We are probably a year out on teaching it still. And when you go test for this, if you do your certifications, it's testing on 2012. So it's not like we're behind um, very far. We're right with where industry is in learning 2012. And then, of course, if you, if you don't um, go out there and work in the field for a couple more years, you'll probably be on 2016. But um, most places are still teaching 2012 and still using 2012. Um, but we want to make sure we're using um, R2. And uh, <clears throat> Data Center Edition is designed for large and powerful companies, servers with up to 64 processors. Um, Standard is a smaller, um, medium to small size company. Essentials is even smaller, limited to 25 user licenses, and then the foundation for um, smaller businesses. So you have different um, versions that you can purchase depending on how big your company is. Um, oh, let me just check my install. Okay, we're getting there. I'm just trying to multitask to kind of teach us some things while we're waiting. I, of course, I can always pause, but then uh, I'm missing out on some really great stuff. Okay, so it's just going through the installation again. And uh, not the installation, the rebooting part of the process. I'll just pop that open in the side window there. Pop this open. Um, so I can keep an eye on it. Uh, server roles. Um, we'll look at installing server different server roles. These are processes that are things that you can do in your server. We're going to look at that one um, in this next video, which does our configurations. Uh, and PowerShell. We can use Server Manager which is the GUI, or PowerShell, which is command line, to add our roles. OK. OK, our server has gone on to this next step. Um, administrator, our first user on our network has to be the admin, and the username is administrator. The password that I recommend you use is this one. This is the one that the book recommends. This is the one that I recommend, and I recommend it so that we don't forget it. Because if you forget your admin password, you're going to have to um, figure out how to fix that. And most of the time, it's going to be starting from scratch. So pull uh, that password. What did I do there? My sticky note. This is how I get distracted right there. Um, sticky notes are supposed to stick up there, but it's not. Okay, um, this password, it, then if we all do the same password when you go, I can't get in, and I'll go, okay, this is what your password is, capital P, A, dollar sign, dollar sign. So hit the shift in the four twice, and then W, zero, R, D. Capital P, A, dollar sign, dollar sign, W, zero, R, D. And then finish. Here it is again. Capital P, A, dollar sign, dollar sign, W, that's a zero, R, and D. And um, 
Microsoft won't let you put in anything. It, it has, even on their admins, even though this is a student environment, they have um, stringent password requirements. So that password like that follows the rules. We have a number, we have um, capitalization, and we have special characters. And we have at least seven characters. So that's your basic password requirements for Windows servers. So make that your password and then we won't have any problems. Write it down and um, if you make it something else, make sure you remember what it is because I can't look in your brain and I can't help you out there. All right, so um, that's the installation. Now the time, my time's off. If your time's off, we're gonna fix that in our configuration. Um, from here, you can control alt delete to sign into your server. Now when you control alt delete, um, because we're in the virtual system, um, it, it popped out to my regular computer and I don't want to re do control alt delete on my regular computer. And you notice the um, help came up there. When I do control alt delete here, there was a message that came up that says, we notice you're in a virtual environment. And there's a way um, to, to get it just to, to control alt delete. Maybe it's um, shift, you add a shift in there or something. Read that little box that comes up and I'll tell you how to do it. But um, if it ever says control alt delete, make sure you get to your virtual system and not your um, main OS out there. So here I'm gonna log in. with my super duper secret password that I just created and told the world about. You do the same. And pops up here is a Windows Server. So to install Windows Server, I'm going to hit no right here. We're not going to do our networks that way. Uh, so how long did that take? About 20 minutes, 15 minutes. 20, 20 minutes while well, I started it at 06. So it's it's about um, 15 minutes to do our installation. We haven't done any configurations, which takes a long time, but we've installed it. Um, server manager, we're gonna, you can minimize that or close it for now. And here I have server C completed. I haven't changed anything. Um, now you can, do a shutdown on this. Um, if you right click on this window option, you can do a shutdown when you want, or you can always just suspend this machine and it's just sitting in this state, which is fine as well. One of the things you'll want to do though is to change the, this so it doesn't point to your ISO and it points to your um, physical drive. But you can't do that until it's completely shut down. Um, now I've noticed on my A and B, it doesn't matter if you change that location. Like I had first said, make sure it, it changes so that it doesn't always try to do the installation. Um, once your server's installed, it should be doing that. And it, it should be just launching the server. So that's not that big of a deal like I first mentioned, but when you are when you do shut this down completely, um, try to change that back to the physical location. So that um, ends this process. Um, as far as what to turn in, you can just do a screenshot of um, all, you know, of something like the, or all of your server um, options maybe, and then just, in the homework assignment, um, write up something about how your installation went and if you had any struggles or questions or things like that. Just a little thing that shows me that you did it so I can give you points. Um, what do you need to do before you can go on to the configuration video that um, is next is you have to install um, server A and server B. So I've I've got, and then you have, and then you need them all launched and loaded. So 
I um, already installed server A, so I'm going to pow power that on. And I did my installation for server B as well. And um, I'm going to power that on as well. The um, I'm going to go back to that error because you might get that too. Um, but when you do the installation again for A and B or whatever, wherever you started, it's exactly the same. Okay, so you you've already can you just do the same process. Um, the thing I was mentioning, like here, I had just changed this to auto detect. And it gave it gave me an error that said this operation could not be completed. It, you can rewind and see it, but now it's launching. So you might want to change that back to um, using the file if you get that error. Or also, I just waited and mine worked. Um, what's that? Was doing something weird. So just um, get all of your servers up so that you're ready installed and up so we're ready to do our configuration in th into the next video okay thank you hope it worked i'm sure it did though there's the pause